Hello, uh, my name is Maria Buchnari Lopez. I am a researcher of ITER Basque, which is the Basque uh, Foundation for, for Science. And I'm also a lecturer at the University of the Basque Country. Uh, both organisms are in northern Spain. Okay, so I will be recording some, uh, some videos on cosmology, uh, outreach in cosmology. And why that? First of all, because I would like, um, it's a kind of uh, a way to be grateful with society. So I've been lucky enough to have been working on something that I like for over 20 years, which is doing research in cosmology. So maybe it's my, now my turn also to um, share my, uh, what I have been learning over all these years, okay? And uh, well, there will be short videos and uh, hopefully there will be one video per month, okay? On this first video, essentially, on the, this one and the, the one coming month, I will make a summary of what could be understood as uh, the history of, of cosmology, okay? Or how was cosmology understood by old civilization? Okay, so let me uh, start. Well, and, and the other reason why I am doing these videos is also to visualize the, 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 the woman working in science, okay? So there is still a way to go, but well, there are quite a few women doing science nowadays. Okay, so let's start with, uh, with the slides. So here we go. We start with ancient cosmology. What does what do, uh, ancient civilization thought about cosmology? Okay, and we will go up to the Middle Age on this first video. Okay, so here we go. So first of all, what is the goal of cosmology? So that's the most uh, important issue on these videos. So cosmology is a science which essentially try to address this question. Where are we coming from and where are we heading to, okay? And it comes from this word cosmos, which means the universe and logic the study. So it's essentially the science that study the origin, the evolution and eventually the end of the universe, if any, okay? Now, how was cosmology understood in past civilization? So for the Babylonian, the universe was something like what is represented here. So they thought it was a flat plateau, which had circular shape as is shown here. And it was floating over some water and it was surrounded by a river. Now the question comes, how come that the star, okay, that we see, don't fall down, okay? And what they uh, thought was that there was a chamber, okay, over which, which was also surrounded by water, so it was essentially on top of the river that was surrounding the earth, and that dome, okay, that surface, where surface where all the stars were located, okay? So this uh, dome was a kind of supporter for the, um, for the star, so that the star didn't fall down, okay? Now, this was 3,000 years before Christ, so roughly 5,000 years before uh, now, okay? Then the Hindu cosmology came and it came with a very uh, nice idea where the universe was cyclic. Nowadays we know that there are some mathematical models that correspond to cyclic cosmology. So what they thought it was that there was a beginning, they didn't know about the Big Bang then, but essentially there was a beginning, then the universe evolved somehow, and then at some point it reached an end. And then there is another cycle. So it starts again, it evolves, reach some point and then at some point again back to the starting point so in this sense it was oscillatory because we had the cycle okay a universe that keep repeating itself uh, an infinite amount of time so therefore the universe was infinite in time there was no beginning okay this is a recurrent idea of our history was were there a beginning or not of the universe okay now the Greek came, I'm sorry, I'm not uh, speaking about what the Chinese and uh, also 
of other civilization did at this regard. So I will be very brief because at the end, what's interesting is on the what we understand, what we know nowadays about the, the universe. So this is just a brief summary about historical facts related to cosmology. I mean, or how was cosmology understood by all civilization? So the Greeks were very important. So let me start with uh, Pythagoras, 500 years before Christ, who is represented here with his famous formula that describe the, the, the sides, the three sides of a uh, right uh, triangle, okay? So what did he thought about the universe? So he already came up with the idea that if we have bodies there, like the sun, the earth, the moon, okay? So these bodies, they don't move freely. There is something that makes them move the way they do, okay? And uh, what he thought was essentially was that what is making them to move the way they do it is because there is some kind of energy. At that time, he didn't know what is, uh, the concept of energy was not clear. So what he came with the, the concept that there was some fire that was spread in the universe, and somehow that fire was making things move the, the way they were moving, okay? He also came up with the idea that already these, um, uh, the earth, the sun, the move, they were orbiting around the uh, some some axis on their, on their own axis. Okay, then uh, Plato slightly after came. Okay, and he stated that time had a beginning. So the universe started at some point. Okay, that's a crucial point because, as I said on the previous slide, so people along the history they came back and forth that there was a beginning for the universe. There was no beginning. The universe was always there. Okay, so it was a recurrent question that only so, was sorted out by the beginning of last century. Okay, uh, so there was a beginning for the universe following Plato, and therefore there was a moment of creation. Okay, of course, if there was a beginning, there was a moment of creation. Uh, where well, Aristotle was had another uh, opinion, so he affirmed that the universe exists has had existed always so there was no uh, starting point okay it doesn't make sense because it has existed always so the universe was infinite in time okay in addition he believed that we were in some privileged position so the earth was at the center of the universe okay so that's how they stayed with us almost two thousand year okay and it gave rise to what is known as the ptolemaic model Okay, which we know nowadays that is wrong. So in this model, essentially the Earth is sitting at the center, okay, and the rest of the planets, including the sun as a star and the moon as a satellite of the Earth, they were all orbiting around the Earth. Of course, they had to come up with some funny ideas. So the planet not only had to make circular orbits but they had to have some kind of small orbits in between so they were making something like this okay well and this model that uh, as we know today's is strong stayed with us almost two thousand years okay well after the greek well the astronomy was also very important in medieval um, islamic society why? For, for, mainly for two reasons. One, religion reason, and the other one, a budgetary or an economical reason. So on the religious side, so essentially they have a fasting month, Ramadan, okay? And uh, they have to pray five times a day at very particular uh, moments of the day, okay? Those moments, for example, when uh, the sun rises and so forth. So they had to have very, uh, they had to, be good in astronomy to calculate this this time okay and then the other reason well when for this five prayer uh, they have to they had to do it in a very specific orientation so they had to look at the, the mecca okay and of course this orientation depends on the point where you are on earth it doesn't uh, the, it's not the same thing if you are in andalusian in andalusia sorry or if you were in turkey or if you were in iraq okay the um, the orientation would be different. Okay. Then uh, the issue of the tax, so the economical reason was related to agriculture. So agriculture followed the solar year, okay, which is longer than the lunar year. 
So every three, 33 lunar year, roughly, we have 32 solar years. So this means that people working in agriculture, every 33 years, they had to pay one extra year of tax, while they had only 32 harvest. Okay. Now, on the Middle Age, uh, they had the idea that there was a beginning for the universe, unlike what... Uh, sorry for going back, unlike what Aristotle was saying. This was not uh, based on any scientific fact, it was simply uh, coming from, uh, from religion. So all the monotheist religion, they believed there was a beginning for the universe, okay? Then the idea of the multiverse was already present in the 12th century through the Iranian cosmology of Fahaddin Razi, okay? Again, this idea had a metaphysical origin, it was based on uh, religious belief. Nowadays, we know that the, uh, there is the possibility of having a multiverse and it's a, a scientific prediction coming, for example, from inflation or from string theory, okay? So this is a bit of history, which is what I will, uh, was planning to do on this, uh, on this first uh, video. Uh, but, I, uh, my, but my goal is essentially to make a video in which I explain this picture. So how we, do we go from the Big Bang or something close to the Big Bang, okay, the beginning of the universe up to today, okay? Before that, on the, on the coming video, we'll have, of course, to speak about uh, the scientists that contributed to gravity. Newton, for example, okay? And Galileo and so forth, okay? That were important let's say, up to the uh, appearance of uh, Einstein's theory of gravity. That is important to explain this, this picture. So I hope you enjoyed the, the video. It was not too, uh, not too boring. Okay, and if you like the video, so please uh, click on a, on a like. So thank you and see you in 2021. Okay, that's all for today.